Russia to launch three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine in May. Vadim Skibitsky, deputy head of defense intelligence of Ukraine, has spoken about a Russian three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine in an interview with The Economist. According to Skibitsky, May will be a key month when Russia will implement a three-layered plan to destabilize Ukraine. The main factor is military. Although the US Congress belatedly approved an increase in military aid, it will take weeks before it reaches the front line. It is unlikely to match Russia's stockpile of shells or provide an effective defense against low-tech destructive guided bombs. Both Ukraine and Russia may eventually face a shortage of weapons, but if nothing else changes, Ukraine will run out of weapons first. Skibitsky said the biggest uncertain factor in the war was Europe. If Ukraine's neighbors do not find a way to further increase their defense production to help Ukraine, they too will eventually be targeted by Russia. He downplayed the importance of Article 5, which deals with NATO's collective defense and even the presence of NATO troops in countries bordering Ukraine. This article, in his view, may prove to be of little practical significance. The Russians will take the Baltics in seven days. NATO's reaction time is 10 days. Skibitsky said the second factor is Russia's disinformation campaign in Ukraine aimed at undermining Ukrainian mobilization and the political legitimacy of Volodymyr Zelensky, whose presidential term is set to expire on the 20th of May. Although the constitution clearly allows for its indefinite extension in wartime, his opponents are already highlighting the president's vulnerability. The third factor, according to Skibitsky, is Russia's relentless campaign to isolate Ukraine internationally. They will be shaking things up whichever way they can. He also noted that Ukraine's bravery and sacrifice have given Europe a multi-year head start, eliminating the immediate threat of once fearsome Russian airborne forces and marines for at least a decade. Now, as Skibitsky stressed, the question is whether Europe will reciprocate by allowing Ukraine to stay in the game. We have no choice. We want to live. But the outcome of the war isn't just down to us. Chinese officials say the death toll from a collapsed highway in southeastern Guangdong province rose to 48, some 24 hours after a section of the four-lane mountainous pass buckled in the wake of record rainfall and flooding, sending 23 vehicles tumbling down a steep slope with some bursting into flames. Point three people remained unidentified, pending DNA testing, according to a local official in Meizhou City. It was not immediately clear if they died, which would bring the death toll to 51. At least 30 other people had non-life-threatening injuries, the Ministry of Emergency Management has dispatched a team to the scene to guide rescue work, and has urged local efforts to accelerate search and rescue work, treat those who sustain injuries, minimize casualties, and determine the cause of the accident. The collapse occurred on one side of a four-lane highway in Meizhou, just as China kicked off a five-day holiday. For a second day, rescuers searched for trapped people by digging through mountainous terrain. Construction cranes lifted out burnt out and mangled vehicles, the National Financial Regulatory Administration has guided insurance institutions to establish a special working group for the emergency handling of such events, integrating insurance resources and open green channels, heavy rains, the risk of secondary disasters and the large number of trapped, burned and buried vehicles were complicating rescue efforts, a city official said. More than 570 people and 80 rescue vehicles have been deployed to help with the mission. Meizhou is one of the areas in southern China's Guangdong that has been overwhelmed by heavy rain since last month. The adverse weather triggered dangerous mudslides, inundated homes, and destroyed bridges, 